Hello everyone, this is Anthony here and welcome to my brief seminar on how to use window blockers. So to start us off, why did I invent window blocker? What is window blocker? Well, let's say that you're working on your homework or your work and you have a paper due or a book report due and you know, you're typing away, but you get distracted or you want to play with, you know, some other games or items on your computer like iTunes. Let's say I double click iTunes and I say I'm just going to work on iTunes for a minute. I'm just going to play a song and then go back to my report. You can see Window Blocker just blocked iTunes. What if I start Windows Media Player? I just want to watch a brief movie and then go back to my book report. Oh, Window Blocker blocked Media Player or Newser. Newser Newser.com. I like Newser.com. Just check the news and then I'll go back to my book report. But Window Blocker blocks that as well. Or let's say I click on YouTube. I want to watch. I want to watch cat videos, and then I'm going to go back to my book report. And window blocker blocks that as well. So you can see that I've placed four distractions here on the left. But no matter what I do, I can't actually start these programs. I can't start to get distracted from my report at all. So I just have to keep typing my book report. And I have really no choice in the matter. I have to, because I can't start anything else because window blocker is going to block any distracting apps. So how does it do that? Well, this is window blocker. And you can see the little red icon here means that it's currently running. And you can see on top, we have a counter which shows how much time is left in my focus session. So I'm gonna actually pause my focus session. It's going to ask me a challenge question. I have to type one little word there. And now you can see I can move this freely. So what does this do? This is just a, a timer, sometimes called a Pomodoro timer. And you can set this anywhere from, uh, you know, five to 90 minutes. And that dictates how much time you're going to focus for. So when I double click the number 25 here, I've just set this up so that um, the timer is set for 25 minutes. And that tells me that when I actually press this play button, then this timer is going to count down 25 minutes, and that's when I'm supposed to focus on my work. Okay, and during that focus session, this bottom portion here contains a list of applications and websites that I do not want to run while I'm focusing on my work. So you can see here, I've typed um, two application names, iTunes.exe and WMPlayer.exe. Now, every program in uh, Microsoft Windows is usually an exe file, and Window Blocker just looks to see if this file is or is not running. And if it sees it running, then it just terminates the file. Now, you can actually see this yourself here, and that's why we built these little display boxes here because they're going to display the names of all the applications that are currently running on your computer. So when I click this twice, it'll add the application to my list here. Now, of course, there's no reason to put it twice, so I'm just going to delete it. But this is how you specify which applications that you'd like Window Blocker to block during your focus session. Now on the right side, this is where you specify which browsers you'd like to block. So now you can see I have newser.com is running and I've specified that whenever window blocker sees the word newser in uh, a running browser on my PC, then it's going to terminate that actual browser and I won't be able to look at newser or YouTube at all. And so that's when the magic happens. Window blocker is able to completely block out all of these distracting applications, and that's going to force me to work on my book report because I won't be able to open up anything that I type here. Any applications that I type will not be allowed to open, and any web browsers that I type will not be allowed to open. I have to keep concentrating on my book report. So let's go through that again. You can see window blocker is always in this little blue clock icon here. It always lives in the bottom right corner of 
Microsoft Windows. Now you can, of course, just move it around any way you want on your screen. You can also click it twice and it uh, will just pop up right above the little blue icon there. This is the minimize button. So whenever you're ready to work, you can always just click that, click it twice to get it back. Uh, the X here will just close the application. We don't want to do that now. Now the um, the gear icon here is just for the other settings. We'll go over that more later. But to review, we've set our timer to 25 minutes. I'm going to double click that. I've entered applications I want to block. I've entered web pages I want to block. I'm ready to sit down and start working on my book report. Then I just press the play button and you can see window blocker has started running. The countdown has started. So I have 25 minutes now to intensely focus on my work and anything I type here will be terminated. So now I'm ready to work. So I'm just going to click my minimize button and I'm back to my Microsoft Word file and I can start typing my report again. And of course, as we've already gone through, when I get distracted and I want to open something else, it doesn't matter because I hear that warning bell and then I see that little icon and I know window blocker has just terminated, terminated the application. And so I am completely free of distraction for this time period. Now you can see on the bottom right here, there's a little counter that shows me where I'm at. I'm at 24 minutes now. And when this um, slider actually gets to the end here, I'm going to get an audio notification. And what's going to happen is one of these little dots will turn into a one. I can actually do it manually as well. And that tells me how many focus sessions I've completed today. So, you know, a goal might be to try to get eight of these little dots completed in one day. And that would just be four hours of work because it's each one is 25 minutes and you take a five minute break. So if you can just do eight of these little dots in a day, that would be four hours of solid, solid concentration on your homework. And, you know, I, if you've ever watched your colleagues or friends working on the computer, you know how quickly they get distracted or how quickly you yourself get get distracted. So just doing a concentrated four hours of work is very difficult to do. And uh, in time, you'll get better and hopefully you can do in 10 or 16 focus sessions per day and then you're a very, very productive person at that point. Let's take a minute to go over one of the most important features now, the punch clock. Now you can see, let's say that you were to wake up at 8.30 a.m. Then that's the little number that appears right here when you press this blue button. Every morning when I get up, I press this blue button. This is the first thing I do in the morning every single day. I press this blue button. And what does that do? That just starts a countdown of how many hours I've been awake for. And that countdown is just right here. Now, you can see every time you press it, it'll just insert the current time there. So let's say, you know, you woke up at yesterday at 11. Now, what happens then is that it's very important to keep track of the exact current time or how many hours it's been, how many hours and minutes it's been since you actually woke up. Because your first four hours of the day are really the most important hours in your entire day because that's when you are least susceptible to the negative effects of mental fatigue. Mental fatigue starts to take its toll really quickly during your workday. So you want to be aware of what's going on in your life in the first four hours because that's when you're most productive. And you can see we have a little chart here in the actual app. And it'll tell you, you know, when your four hours is up, when eight hours is up, when 12 hours is up, and when 16 hours is up. Most people have a waking life of about 16 hours and they have a sleeping life of around seven to eight hours. That's considered, you know, a healthy waking life and sleeping life. So it's important to keep track of this because the punch clock works in conjunction with the focus sessions that the punch clock helps you keep an eye on your 
current level of mental fatigue and how long you've been working on whatever task you're working on and how many hours you've actually been awake. And it always places the number right here in the corner of window blocker as well. So no matter what tab I'm on, I can always actually visually see my punch clock here in the bottom left corner. Let's go over a couple more tabs. The alarm clock here is pretty self-explanatory. We just have three little alarms and of course you can just turn them on and it'll just beep whenever you need to actually, you know, remember something. You can uh, put a note here on each one if you want to and you can remember, um, you know, why you set the alarm itself. So that's pretty useful. The world clock helps you keep track of if you have, you know, employees or colleagues in different uh, areas of the world, or international colleagues maybe, you can always see what time it is in uh, different cities, cities outside your time zone. So that can be pretty useful. Your birthday clock will just tell you exactly how old you are. So your most, you know, viable years, your most important years, your most creative years are pretty much between the ages of 20 and 50. That's when um, everyone does, you know, their most creative work, usually, and even in the first 10 years, if you want to look at the bios of some of the early scientists, they are often in their 20s. But, you know, no matter what um, age or what year you hit here, it'll always compute um, your birthdays for you. And it'll tell you, you know, kind of where you're at, where you at in your life. And um, you, know, you can kind of plan accordingly. And it gives you a list of birthdays here all the way up to 100. Uh, the calendar is pretty self-explanatory. It's just a 12-month calendar. So you can visually look at the entire year on one page. And I, I actually use this a lot because I really like to see kind of where I'm at in the year. And it's actually uh, kind of hard to find an app that just has this function where you can just visually see the entire year. So that's kind of useful. Writers suffer. This might be familiar if you're a writer because um, there, there's uh, several writer suffer apps on the internet. And basically what they do is that if you stop typing, it'll play an annoying sound. So you can see here, I've given myself 15 seconds and if I don't start typing, it's going to play, you know, this disturbing sound. It's going to encourage me to keep typing. So here it goes. So that's pretty annoying. So now you watch every time I'm, I start typing words, that little blue bar will actually get back down to zero. And if I stop typing, that bar will creep, will start creeping up again. So that can be really useful to um, keep your fingers going because part of the the chore of writing, the most difficult part of writing is often just sitting down and starting to write to just get those fingers moving. Now, the timers are pretty straightforward as well. We have a, a stopwatch, which is just a stopwatch. Pretty useful if you have a home gym or a treadmill. And the countdown timer, pretty useful if you're cooking food, these are sometimes called egg timers. And I usually use this when I have something on the stove or when I have to have a, you know, a meeting or I'm supposed to be on Skype in 10 minutes, then I can just set that and that'll warn me uh, when my actual countdown is up. On the bottom row here, this is uh, pretty self-explanatory. As explained, we have my punch clock. The same value here is the same value in the bottom left of my uh, window blocker app. And then, of course, we just have the day and the date. And that's it. Pretty self-explanatory. So we've worked really hard on this app to try to make it as absolutely easy as possible to use. This has been had gone through many, many versions in the last two years. And, um, you know, it, it, it came out pretty attractive. It's really, really simplified and intuitive, much more than how it used to be. We'll go through a few more functions here. You can see we have this one, five, and 10 here. All this does is it will just add more time to your actual running counter here. So let's say that, you know, someone walks into my office and I get distracted and maybe they'll, they'll take up five minutes of my time and I really wanna, you know, have that time back. So I'm gonna hit the number five here and you can see my timer has just jumped up. So I've put five minutes back on my timer 
and now I can get back to my focus session. So these interruptions are a lot of times unavoidable during the day. So, you know, if someone bugs you for a minute, you can just hit this. Or if someone takes 10 minutes of your time, you can hit that. And then you don't have to interrupt your actual focus session. You can just add time to it. Now, when I actually really, really do need to stop um, my focus session, if I have a really important interruption, I hit that pause button. And then I'm going to be faced with the challenge question. So it's going to make me type something. Now, on, I'm on easy level right now. So it's pretty easy to get out of my focus session because I'm just in easy level. You can see if I switch to medium level and I pause, the red text has just gotten longer. And the reason this is here is it, it's a discouragement to not terminate your focus sessions early. So you have to learn to guard your own personal time um, in the same way you would guard your bank account because personal time is, is very important. And so you don't want to have uh, people interrupting your focus sessions. So whatever you can do in your environment to prevent that from happening, then I highly suggest you do that because um, ultimately, you know, all the money in the world will not buy one second of time. So it's really, really important to really salvage your peace and quiet during these focus sessions and try to make it so that no one bothers you during that time. It's only 25 minutes. And once you start getting into time management, you'll be surprised at how, how easy it is to lose 25 minutes of time and how many people and phone calls and internet devices will ring and buzz and how many elements in the day will try to bother you during just 25 minutes, which doesn't seem like a lot of time, but 25 minutes of focus in the modern age is actually, is actually very precious. So once again, we just click the play button and we click the minimize button and then we can go back to typing our book report. And that's it in a nutshell. That's how we use window blocker. It's pretty easy. Now, one thing you might notice, I'm going to double click the icon here, is these little, I'm going to get out of the focus session. You see these little green and blue text here in the actual application block. Now, this um, these two little slashes here uh, create a comment. So anything you put here, it just means it's going to be ignored. So if I have, um, if I want, this is just a note to myself. Like if I want to put Skype here, so you can see I've just made another note and maybe after this um, green uh, text here, I might want to list um, distracting communication apps like Skype or Microsoft Messenger. So that's all that is. It's just a little note to myself. And um, if you have a lot of items in this list, then the little notes can be uh, pretty helpful. Personally, I usually only keep about two or three items in here because during um, during your life, you, you often only have a couple things that are very distractive at any given time. Uh, often uh, YouTube and news are for me personally, just I'm always going back to the, to the news and, and cat videos on YouTube a lot of the time. But either way, um, yeah, you can use these notes here to just kind of keep track of uh, categorizing the distracting applications. And in the beginning of the day, when you want to um, clear your focus sessions, you can right click here and just select clear all. And that will set that back to zero. You can, of course, also use the arrows as well. But um, when you wake up in the morning, then, you know, it's good to set that back to zero because then you kind of have a, um, a, a goal, a daily goal of how many focus sessions you'd like to complete that day. So as I mentioned, if you can just get through, you know, eight of them, then you're doing pretty good. So, you know, every morning I come here and I, I right click and I just click clear. I set this back to zero and, um, you know, that kind of lets me keep track of how much focusing I was able to accomplish that day. We don't have much in the settings tab right now, but this little gear gets to the setting tab as mentioned, and you can see our little application logo there. Uh, pretty simple, cute little beaver. So I hope that um, does a good job of explaining exactly how window blocker works. If you have any questions, please contact me via the website. Thank you.